broomsticks, broken bones, and fully grown adults dressed in school uniforms. This is the Quidditch World Cup. I'm with Alex, who's the Commissioner of the International Quidditch Association. How did Quidditch transform from Harry Potter books into real life? Uh, it was transformed by one uh, genius person, my friend Xander Manchel, who was uh, my classmate at Middlebury College. And he just, he took it a game that, that many people would think impossible to adapt to real life without um, gravity-defying grooms, and he did it very well. What are some of the compromises that have had to be made to account for the lack of the supernatural world here? I'd, I'd say the most significant compromise and uh, the best part of the game is the human snitch. And other people have tried to play Quidditch before, but they always use a, a bouncy ball or a remote control helicopter or something that doesn't really have personality. And Xander came up with the idea of creating this human snitch who has no rules, no boundaries, he can do whatever he wants. So you get these super athletes dressed all in gold and people go nuts for it. I've caught myself a snitch named Pablo. Now in the books, the snitch is a, a mechanical gold flying ball, right? Yes. So how does that translate to real life? In the books, the snitch is supposed to have its own life in a way, and uh, it flies and goes wherever it wants. As the way we play, we translated that to a human who can just run wherever he wants, try to avoid the seekers, and uh, he has a sock hanging from the back of his shorts with a tennis ball in it, and the seekers, if they pull out that sock, then the snitch has been caught and the game ends. And, and watching it is just so frenzied, and the snitches are really fast, and they sort of dodge and weave. What kind of skills do you need to be a snitch? So it's helpful if you're, if you're fast, if you're quick, because that really helps to, to get away from the seekers. And yeah, it's also good to be creative uh, the, the public likes stunts, they like uh, watching the snitch go through the field doing some crazy activity, you can do whatever, make it fun, make it a show. I'm here with Abby, who's the captain of the Harvard Quidditch team. Now, I rocked up in my Gryffindor colours. Seems like there's no actual Gryffindor, but it corresponds nicely to the Harvard colours, so I'm going to support Harvard. It's completely fine with me. And it seems like a good choice, because you just won your first game, right? We did. It was a great, it was a great like, turnout by everyone. Now, I have a slightly delicate question. You're, you're always holding this broomstick between your legs, especially for the guys. Is there the propensity for injury? There's always a chance you can injure yourself, but uh, like, you'd be surprised how little it gets in the way. Like, you've got to try it, like, we can get you a broom and you can try it, but, like, it's actually, like, not that bad. The worst part about the broom is, like, see the top, how there's, like, those bristles? So, like, when you're running, and, like, if you fall, the worst part is, like, you get scratches all up the back of your legs and the bristles. Like, very few people actually, those brooms, I think they make them specifically for this, because, like, if you fall and, like, the contact is going to actually hurt you, they snap. It's better to have to buy a new broom than buy a new body. Buy a new leg, yeah. To find out more about all this, visit internationalquidditch.org. I'm Ella Morton and you've been watching Rocket Boom NYC.